Hey, so in this video we'll continue the walkthrough of the creation of Tifa from where I left off in part 1. If you missed part 1, I covered a lot of cool stuff including the program I'm using, the drawing tablet, sculpting, modeling, retopologizing Tifa, and a lot more. I'll add a link to that video in the description below so that you can watch it if you haven't yet. In the second part, I'll cover the rigging, posing, and finalizing the sculpt of Tifa just until the point where she's ready for texturing. The texturing will be in a third part, so make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so that you get notified when it comes out. Now that the intro is out of the way, let's get right to it. One method to pose a character in 3D is to add an armature. Think of it as a skeleton for your character. You place the bones and joints in areas where actual joints are, then you connect your character to that armature so that you can move them around. This of course is a very simplified way of explaining it. You can either build the bones manually and create your own rig, or use a pre-made one in Blender called Rigify and modify it to suit your character. It is a native add-on in Blender that you can activate in the software. After connecting the bones to the character, you will still need to do a lot of cleanup, especially if you plan to animate as opposed to just posing. Either way, for Tifa we're going to use this just for posing so the corrections and work behind it will be simpler and less tedious than otherwise, but it will still require some work as you will see. Once I connect the armature to Tifa, I'll move her around a bit and do some corrections to any bad deformations before committing to a final pose. Further corrections will be done later through sculpting as we will see shortly. Once I finish doing some quick cleanup, I'll do a test pose to see if everything looks decent. I can certainly stick to this pose here, but I want it to go for a closed fist fighter look, so I will go from here and further pose her towards that idea. Once I finish with the final pose, there will still be a few things that I have to do. First of all, I will have to correct any deformations that were created from moving her around. I also want to sculpt in any changes that happen from that pose such as how the skin will compress and stretch in different areas like the fingers in a fist, or how the pelvic area will react to how her body is twisted and rotated. Other things should also be taken into account which we will see in a minute. In addition to all of that, I'll go over every part of Tifa sculpting in more details to her anatomy and clothes to achieve the stylized look with a hint of realism of which I am aiming for. All of this was planned ahead from the start which is why I didn't bother adding all of these details before posing her in the early stages of her sculpt. Okay, let's go through these stages I just mentioned. When bending the arms you want to pay attention to how the olecranon at the upper end of the ulna, or the elbow joint, becomes more prominent and visible. Also keep in mind that the forearm is a very tricky area because of how many flexor and extensor muscles there are and how the forearm can pronate and supinate where the ulna and radius overlap causing some twisting in the muscles over there. Just to clarify, pronation and supination is the action of turning your hands and the ulna and radius are the bones of the forearm. You'll also see me go back and forth and do some corrections from deformations that occurred when I posed her just like how I'm correcting her skirt right here. At this point I'll work on her hands and gloves since they will require some attention because of all of the compressions, stretching, bony prominences such as the knuckles that you'll get as a fist as opposed to a relaxed hand, including other things like wrinkles, creases and folds. I'll revisit these parts later in the sculpt to truly refine these areas, for now my main focus is to inflate the finger sections. You'll notice that I look at my hand for reference to see how everything truly pans out in that pose. My advice for you would be that you make sure to use reference as it will both help you improve the outcome and also work as a reminder for parts that you already know. Also, no matter how well you grasp a subject, we tend to forget or remember things differently from how we initially learned them. So in order to avoid developing bad habits, try to do anatomy studies here and there both to learn new things and strengthen knowledge that you have already acquired. Since I modified the hands, I will now work on the fingernails and other glove accessories to match these changes. Moving on to the hair, since I tilted Tifa's head during the posing, I will have to rework how the hair interacts with the body and how gravity will affect it in this position. Here I thought I'd rework the arm sleeves a bit by improving the volumes of the arm underneath and by changing how long the sleeves are. Sometimes when posing a character, some areas can get some pretty bad deformations, an example would be how simply tilting her shoes upwards messed around a lot with the shoelaces area. So here I'm fixing the part right before I start the last stage of sculpting throughout the character. Okay, time to add some of that realism I talked about. Since I have all of my character retopologized, I will now sculpt using the multi-resolution modifier as opposed to dynamic topology for extra details. You can ignore these terms if you sculpt in a different program. Starting off with the torso's lower portion, I will sculpt her navel, muscles, fat, and bony landmarks while taking into account any compressions or stretches she has from this pose and any tilting or twisting. I always mention how important it is to learn anatomy, even more so for poses especially since you might not find similar references for them. 
For any body part, I'll build the sculpt in steps. First by sculpting a gestural version of the positions of the muscles and bones, then I'll refine them and make them pop out as I move forward while working the fatty areas. If you are wondering how I approach anatomy, it is a mix of studying it through books and other sources whilst drawing and sculpting for practice and application on a regular basis. It might seem like a daunting subject, but this is only at first. It does take time, but the more you put effort into this subject, the easier and more enjoyable it becomes. I'll approach her outfit in a similar way to the body while taking into account the type of fabric and of course the folds, creases and wrinkles. It should also be noted that the clothes form and folds are directly affected by the body and her pose. For example, you'll notice how I hint some of her muscles through her shirt. As for the folds and wrinkles of her outfit, I might not be relying on references but there's still some logic behind how I sculpt them for it to work even for a stylized look. Observe how your own shirt has folds depending on the type of clothes you are wearing and even your pose. Also pay attention to the major tension points. In fact, take a second to look in the mirror and raise your arms. You will see how some big folds will travel from tension points of the side of your torso and chest to the tension points towards the arms caused by them being raised. Here I'm sculpting in some seams for the t-shirt using a smooth stroke to add some believability to the outfit. If you didn't know, smooth stroke is something you can activate under the options of stroke in Blender sculpting tools. This is the same for every other sculpting program I used. It gives your brush a delay which helps you make smoother lines when you have to sculpt a long stroke in one go, like with the seams. I will now work on the upper part of the torso starting by defining the chest region. Then I will work on the neck and collar bone. Here I'll work on the shoulder area while being careful with my strokes since the arms are very close to the torso. This area as mentioned in part 1 of the walkthrough can be very tricky because of how close it is to the body and also because of all of the muscles overlapping each other. Just take a look at some anatomical reference and pay close attention to it. Notice which muscles go over which. Now onto the legs. At first the legs might look simple but in reality its form is somewhat complex. Also similar to the elbow, you have to pay attention to how the form of the knee region changes when the legs are flexed. For her pose, I initially sculpted the muscles and bony landmarks as I remember them, then I went ahead and stood the same way in front of a mirror to figure out any parts I was unsure of. It is actually very helpful to have a long mirror that you can pose in front of showing your full figure, since finding reference online with the same pose can prove to be difficult. I thought that the socks looked a bit boring here, so I decided to add some folds and creases to spice it up a bit. Now I'll work on the skirts by giving some thickness to the edges with the inflate brush. I will then add in some big folds and try to give it somewhat the appearance of leather. Just keep in mind that the type of cloth will change how the folds work. As for the gloves, I'll start off by giving some thickness to the edges here with the inflate brush. Again, you will see me use my hands as reference to work on the intricate details. The knuckles become very prominent when your hands are fully flexed, so I'll further sculpt them as you can see here to give some impact to the fist. Since I already posed her and applied the armature, I don't have any symmetry to work with anymore. So here I'll have to do any changes to both sides of Tifa separately. If you find yourself sculpting without symmetry, just go back and forth and build up the shape slowly while keeping both sides around the same level of details. This will make it a bit easier to get both sides looking similar. Here I'm just looking at how the skin compresses and folds with my hands and then I'm applying any observation I make to the sculpt while being conscious that I am sculpting the gloves over the hands and not the actual hands. I will also try to come up with folds and wrinkles to give her gloves the look of actual cloth rather than skin. Now I'll finish up the gloves with more folds, then work a bit on the bandages and the bands on the glove. I will also sculpt the fingers as well with the same logic I applied to the gloves on how the joints will be prominent since they are flexed and how the skin creases and compresses in these areas. Okay, at this point I'll continue doing the same thing for the rest of the character, going over every part of her outfits. I want to make sure to keep the level of detail consistent all around. Anyways, while I do that, I thought I'd give some advice. I know that a lot of you asked me about how I sculpt clothes. Now, I strongly suggest you pick a bunch of reference for different kinds of clothes and observe how things work. Really, it's all about the observation and application. To be honest, I didn't do that here, but I advise against my laziness for two main reasons. First of all, I have some sculpting experience which is why I was able to get by for the most part for Tifa, but the character could have looked better otherwise. More importantly, you won't learn how things work without observing from reference and you might even develop bad habits this way. Don't get me wrong, working without reference has its own benefits, but keep a healthy balance between learning through reference and practicing without it, focusing more on the former. Also there is a big difference between looking at reference and actually observing and learning from it. Of course, the latter is what you should be doing.
I think this is a pretty good place to stop part 2. Now part 3 is coming out really soon, it's all about text train Tifa. Well, it might already be out depending on when you're watching it, but either way, just make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, so that you don't miss it when it comes out and uh, any of my future videos. I'll see you guys in the next one. Also, like the video if you did, if you... Make sure to subscribe to the channel for more awesome character sculpts and art related videos. You can also check out my store for full courses on character sculpting, texturing, materials, brushes and more. Last but not least, if you enjoyed this video then you will definitely enjoy the next one.